everyone, welcome to HOA Fight Club. I'm going to discuss the next part of my story today, um, of my horror story um, with the condo association that I lived in. So the last time I left off that we were going to do a recall of the board. Well, to get this recall started, I had to actually write letters to every single homeowner. There was 130 units. So I created a letter that talked about what I felt was going on, um, told people that if they wanted to be on an email list, I had given them all my information and started the process of getting to know my neighbors. Um, I would hold get-togethers once a month at the cabana. I would rent it out. Notice rent it out. We have to pay for our, what our common areas. It was really crazy um, because we already pay for them, but that's fine. I rented out the con, the con or the cabana and all of us met there I supplied the beer and wine and everybody else brought an appetizer or dessert and this became quite the process for like six months. We got together, we discussed things, we discussed, you know, not just HOA things, but we really got to know each other. Um, everybody became really close. Um, I actually became quite the uh, person that was helping the seniors go to their doctor's appointments and things like that. And, and I really, really enjoyed being with the people. I actually got um, my best friend that is was living in there she became my best friend she worked with me i'm her um children's godmother now so there was a lot of good things that happened due to this horrible incident so i got everybody together we had to have 25 homeowners sign a document saying that we won the recall so we did we got it together got all the signatures in and then the board kept trying to deny this well we finally got a date um sent or set for the for the a hearing which just happened to be the same day that i had my um my court with the the president for a no contact order so it was really kind of a crazy day um my attorney was going to be there their attorney was going to be there it was going to be this big deal so as we're waiting for this date to come my husband gets fined for smoking in the garage now i the neighbor that lived right next door to me, his rental people, they also got fined for smoking in their garage. So I did some research because at this time, again, I don't know this. I mean, I know the CCNRs, but I don't know how to use everything and how to read everything and make everything um, work the way it's supposed to. So I read the CCNRs and it said that the description of a unit included our garages. So the board cannot fine us for our garages. So I asked for, of course, a due process hearing. The board had never done these due process hearings and they never called it a due process hearing. Um, what I found that if I, when I read the CCNRs that the board was failing to follow the process of the CCNRs. When they did a fine or even a warning, they had to send out, a pen, they called it Appendix A. Well, Appendix A was a whole page of due process. You know, this is what's going to happen in the hearing. This is what your rights are. This is what the HOA is going to do and blah, blah, blah. So it spelled everything out. Well, they hadn't been mailing that form out. Well, that's part of the process. So it was really important. So I went to this, I was going to go to this due process hearing for my husband smoking in the garage to say, we can smoke in our garage because it's our unit. So I went in there and I said, uh, you know, I, I was going to bring witnesses um, of our, you know, that we can smoke there and that it's our unit. And I wanted people to be there to see what was going on in these hearings. So as I walked in to the hearing with the board, the homeowners that showed up was probably about 30, 35 homeowners showed up and walked in with me. Well, as we walked in, the serving president at the time, which the other president had resigned again because of all this chaos, um, her friend was serving as the president right now and she was fuming. She was so angry at me. There was just so much animosity. And as she, as I walked in, she said, you are a waste of our time and you deserve to be fined. So questioning the board made it so that I was deserved to be fined, which was so unfair. You know, I wasn't trying to hurt anyone. I was trying to do the right processes. So at first they said, well, we're canceling the hearing. So everybody that had walked in the building walked back out of the building. And then they said, and I walked out too, I wasn't going to have a hearing with this board without everybody there. So they finally agreed to let everybody in to have the hearing. Of course, we own the unit. They said, well, you know, he stepped over the line. 
N no, he, he didn't step over the line. There is no line in the garage. Well, you have to keep the garage door closed. No, I don't have to keep the garage door closed. You know, and then you go into the obnoxious smells and obnoxious, you know, so they were trying to do anything they could to fine us. The only reason my husband was smoking was because of them. It was a stressful situation. He had quit smoking and this was just the most stressful time for us because we were fighting for our home. So it was crazy. They ended up having to drop it. But then they started counting that as the, you've had all your warnings because they'd given us, you know, these warnings. Well, their warnings were bogus warnings. So if, if you're proven wrong, if you give somebody a warning and they're proven wrong, that warning now goes away and you deserve another warning if you're doing something wrong for that same issue. But they didn't count it that way. So the, we kept going. We started the recall. Um, we got everything together. And in the morning, I went to my court date for the no contact order. And then that evening, I had the recall. Now, the recall was crazy in itself. Um, but there was some good things. First of all, 80% of the ownership showed up for the recall. Now in the declaration and the bylaws, it says that every, for a special meeting of the owners called for a purpose, you have to have, you have to be present. There's no proxies in those things. So when we got there that night, you know, first of all, talk about chaos. Um, so we walked in, there was a police officer present um, he was there to make sure that we conformed that he was there for me. So he was making sure that I wasn't going to cause any problems. Now I had my attorney and the HOA attorney was present. So we got in there, we all sat down, 80% of the membership was there. Now, what we didn't realize is that these people weren't the actual members. They were stand-ins. Um, they had proxies that they were actually using. Um, they had, the board had accumulated many of the proxies um, and just had people show up. It was crazy. It was just so crazy what was going on. Um, at that point, when they said that they could use proxies, I knew that we would lose the recall. Now, in the process of the recall, I had also gone and finally got into a couple of the documents of the association. The property manager left me a stack of papers for two months months worth of financials. Well, of course, in those two months worth of financials, I found out a lot. I found out that there was money commingling of funds. There was money being transferred through the property management company to, a, to other nonprofits, um, which we didn't know where that money was going and why, which I, we found out later that it was the board um, pushing money out so that they could use it for other things. Um, and when I was asking for the accounting of you know, what rentals we owned, because the association actually owned, I think, five homes at that time. So we were, they were, you know, renting those out until the mortgages foreclosed. And there's a whole nother story on one of those homeowners. Um, and I will get into that because I think it's really sad what happened to her. Um, but I'll get into that later. So at that point, when I got my three minutes to speak, I stood up and said, you know, you guys, I have received many people's information. I have the property management company had given me everybody's checking account numbers. I had social security numbers for people that were past due or in collections. I had just everything that was kind of all the personal documents that they probably shouldn't have given me. So I stood up and said that and the homeowners went ballistic. They were so angry at the property manager that the recall really didn't matter at that time because everything fell apart at that time. Um, the just happened. This is a recall of the owners. Now, when you go to a recall of the owners, you have to be an owner to be present. Now, when it first started, I actually had one person that I knew wasn't an owner and he was there and I had him thrown out. So when I found out that all these other people were, had proxies, they weren't even the homeowners, you know, the whole thing was, was, should have been negated at that point and, and redone, but you know, just not knowing everything. So, but I did have other people thrown out of that meeting because they weren't owners and then come to find out that one of the people that was acting as a homeowner was the owner of the property management company. Um, 
he ended up being in, you know, deep doo-doo that night and ended up getting fired that night. But they, this property management company had managed them for probably about 15 years at the time, um, 10 to 15 years. And so they had quite the scam going um, there at that property and many liens and foreclosures. And they were fired that night. So at the end of the day, you know, it ended up working. Um, one of the, the person that I had thrown out, uh, he, he was yelling at my husband and a board uh, member and, you know, saying your effing wife. And, you know, he just, there was so much anger and it could have all been taken care of if the board would have just been um, able to communicate with the homeowners and participate. Now, there was a couple board members that did participate in the homeowners meetings um, and get togethers, but they did not speak up when they should have spoke up. They were seeing things that were wrong and they were allowing it, which meant they were voting for it and they were responsible for the damages that they had done. Um, but the recall was crazy. Um, we ended up losing the recall, but the property manager ended up uh, quitting that night. And then we hired a new, they hired a new property manager within the next few weeks. Um, and I'll go over that in the next story. But the recall was crazy. Um, and I wish I could go back and do it all over again because now I know what I'm doing. Um, it's a lot easier to understand when somebody has been through it and actually knows the law. And I would have actually been more aggressive um, with the, you know, having to verify proxies and who's the actual owner and who's on the title and all of that matters. Um, most uh, CCNRs require you to be a member. Um, even if you were married to a person in our association, you were not considered a member unless you were on the title. So all of those things matter. So on that note, we will leave it there and I will tell you about the days after the recall from that because, oh my goodness, you won't believe what they did that night of the recall and how they voted for, guess what? Me to be fined. All right, I'll see you in the next one.